how dangerous is Lyme disease? I mean, is it growing every year or is it a limited problem? Uh, it's, well, it's as, uh, about 300,000 cases a year in the U.S. Uh, so it is a very sizable problem. It doesn't look like it is gr growing, but neither is it diminishing. And uh, uh, the very uh, serious consequences that of those 300,000 cases, uh, 10 to 20 percent of people, meaning uh, 30,000 plus people, will go on to develop post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome, which is a uh, chronic unpleasant disease. And one of the things that we talked about earlier that you're concerned about is that the general practitioners or people are just going to their regular doctor if they get a tick bite and they're sending them home and say, see you later, and there's no warning about what could put could potentially happen. Talk to us yeah, about that's that. true. They're, they're sent home, of course, with medication, with uh, uh, doxycycline, an oral antibiotic. So you, you take pills for about two weeks and uh, you hope that you will be well. But uh, again, there is a distinct possibility that you will not be. And what, um, and you wish doctors should warn patients about this? What would that, how would I that think help? Yes. I think yes. Well, I think that, that uh, patients just have to be aware of their options, right? And there is, in principle, an option uh, to ask for stronger medication. There are uh, antibiotics, like my group found, that uh, vancomycin, for example, another common antibiotic, is considerably better in killing the pathogen that causes Lyme disease. Just that antibiotic is not orally available. You have to take it uh, as an IV. Uh, you know, that may be problematic, but I think it should be up to the patients to decide what they want to do. Do they want to take the risk of developing PTLDS or don't? because they may not know how, how serious it is. Talk yeah. to us about how, what are some of the, those people in that 10% yeah. group, what kind of suffering goes on? Well, they develop uh, Lyme arthritis, uh, so that means their joints get swollen, painful, they cannot walk very well. Uh, they can develop neurological disorders where they have what they describe as a, you know, a foggy uh, mind. So the fogginess comes uh, into the brain, uh, the memory loss, uh, fatigue. Uh, it is uh, a complex of very uh, unpleasant uh, symptoms. And how long do these symptoms last? Uh, these symptoms can last for many years. It can alter the person's life if they are uh, one of these it, people. It, it can essentially, uh, you know, diminish uh, the life to re really a, uh, a dysfunctional, from a fun very highly functional, you can become, you know, dysfunctional. Tell me this, what, um, talk to me, bring me up to date, what are the challenges? This is something you've been researching and working on in your career, and obviously there's a conference here today where they're meeting of all the minds in different facets. What, right. What's most challenging to you? What areas are you working on? Well, uh, one challenge would be uh, to find the risk factors. Uh, what are the risk factors that will tell us that this person has a, a risk of developing post-treatment Lyme uh, disease? And so then, uh, if that is the case, if you know you come to a doctor's office, you, 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 there's a blood test, and the blood test will tell us that you are at risk of developing the chronic form of Lyme disease. And then you will be offered, proactively offered, a strong medication like vancomycin intravenously, for example, instead of doxycycline, which is currently given to patients. So that's so that's one thing, uh, which is a challenge. Uh, but, but I think that is a uh, entirely doable and solvable problem. I think uh, maybe within a year or two will be there. Uh, and then uh, uh, the really tough problem is, of course, what to do with people who already have PTLDS, that uh, the chronic form. Uh, and so there are, you know, basically two possibilities. One is the pathogen is still there, and the other, the pathogen is no longer there because uh, you know the pathogen uh, wrecked our immune system for example or did something else irreversible damage uh, these days are reversible and uh, the, the question is what to do with those patients so so one thing that uh, we have been doing uh, is developing uh, better antibiotics that can uh, kill Borrelia and one thing that we find is that uh, the pathogen forms a dormant form, which is very hard to kill with regular antibiotics. So now we have an experimental compound that kills the dormant form. So I'm hopeful that if uh, you know chronic Lyme is caused by 
uh, hiding and dormant pathogen, we now have, uh, in principle, an answer uh, for that. How long that before problem. that would be something regular people can take? Uh, not too long, because this compound actually happens to be FDA approved, meaning uh, you do not need clinical trials uh, to give it to it's a It's a drug that's already out there on the market? Yes, for something else. For something else, for but something you can't else. say what it is? Uh, not today. <laughs> so let me ask you this, um, PT, PTL, what, what, PTLDS, what does that yes. stand for? Post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome. Got it. And Lyme disease, um, you're calling it a bacterium or a pathogen, what, what uh, so will, if I have, have ever gotten Lyme disease, does that stay in my body forever, like some well, kind of a virus? Well, yeah. uh, no, no, it, well, it's a bacterium, uh, so it, it'll stay. Uh, in your body if you don't take antibiotics. If you take antibiotics, you have a uh, very good chance, you know, like 90% that it will be cleared. And then 10% that it will, it will, it will uh, hang on uh, for a while. But then whether it will be cleared or not, we still do not know. Because you see, if there's a very small number of uh, tiny cells of this pathogen somewhere in your body, it is very hard to diagnose, very hard to determine. So that's something that we really don't, do not know at the moment. And what um, uh, the, um, how many, um, I'm sorry, I'm still thinking about the compound. So you can't tell me what that is because why? It has to be patented or? No, we haven't published it, you know. Oh, we uh, hasn't published it. Yes, when are you going right. to publish it? Oh, uh, within half a year. Within half a year, okay. Yeah, because right now we're testing it in mice to see okay. if it's effective. Uh, and then you in, test it in, in people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are you using immunology at all? Uh, so, uh, uh, I know they're using it to fight cancer. That's why yeah, I asked. I understand. Sure. Uh, so, uh, uh, so that brings yeah, you bring up a, a good point because uh, immunology is important, especially uh, if in cases where you have uh, the chronic form of the disease, the pathogen is no longer there, but the immune system has been wrecked. How do you fix it? Right, and so. Uh, a number of groups, including my own lab, uh, is working on interventions that can fix any shift uh, in the immune response. Got it, but um, not there yet. They haven't. Not there yet. No. Got it. Got no. it. What um, is there hope for people that are suffering with this chronic form of Lyme disease? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, especially in the last several years, when my group uh, uh, came into this field several other very strong groups. So there has been uh, you know, a considerable movement into the field of Lyme from uh, a number uh, you know, uh, of uh, strong, strong groups uh, around the country. Uh, there are several reasons for that. One is that we just became increasingly aware of that problem. It is a, a very I both important and interesting challenge for, for a scientist uh, or for a doctor to solve. We, l we like to solve problems, you know. The harder the problem, the more interesting it is. Uh, so that's good for the patients, right? That we like to solve tough problems. Uh, and then also, uh, frankly, uh, funding became available, which is also very important. A number of foundations, like the Cohen Foundations, the GLA. Uh, foundations, Global Lyme Alliance, uh, they started putting in, uh, you know, real money. And, and you need serious resources to go after a tough problem like that one. You cannot go after Lyme disease on a shoestring budget. It's just not going to happen. So these, uh, these things coalesce together, and now we know considerably, uh, considerably more. And at this conference today, which is terrific, uh, you know, I hear uh, you know, presentations from different experts coming, coalescing together, you know, helping one another. And, and we're working together collaboratively. So I think, uh, uh, I think the pathogen probably has uh, met its match. I think we uh, are in pretty good shape. And what if somebody who's watching our story has a loved one who's suffering with these long-term symptoms? They're in that 10%. What can they do right now? How far off are any of these results for them? Right. You know, I'm not a doctor, right? right. I'm, I'm a scientist, uh, so I cannot uh, give any any specific any specific advice. But uh, what I can tell uh, to patients like that that there is definitely hope. That's great. And what? Um, and the hope is in two areas, both prevention, testing if you're going to be one of these people, and in 
the actual treatment itself, whether you just are ravaged by the Lyme disease and no longer have the pathogen, or whether it's still in your body and somehow resistant to antibiotics? Is that uh, a problem well, too? We call it tolerant. Uh, okay. But, uh, but you're right. In, both, in either case, we are, well, in, what, in one case, we simply have a compound that can kill the dormant form. It's a, a matter of testing it in mice and in people. Uh, I'm very optimistic that it's going to work. And a somewhat more difficult proposition is if the, the pathogen is not there and you need to, you know, fix the immune system. But, um, uh, but there also, we and other groups have pretty good tools to do that. So what made you interested in this kind of research? Why Lyme disease? Well, you know, I've been working in, um, in chronic infections caused by different pathogens like MERS uh, or TB for a long time. Uh, and we've uh, done fairly well understanding the nature of these diseases, you know, describing the dormant form of pathogens, finding compounds that are now in development uh, to treat them. And so uh, Lyme came within my uh, sphere of interest because it seemed like another chronic disease, but unlike those, it is much more difficult to understand and to treat, so, so that, you know, that's a challenge. I mean, we like to work on, on tough problems. Why is Lyme so challenging to treat? Uh, well, it's, it's, challenging, it's challenging to treat uh, because we do not understand the nature of this post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome, right? We do not know whether the pathogen is there or not there. We don't even have a, a, an answer to that seemingly simple question. So that makes it uh, a very difficult uh, proposition, and we do not know what is the difference between those people who, who will or will not develop it, right? So we do not yet know the answer the answer to those questions. Uh, so while we are working on answering those questions, we and others in the field, uh, we are also in parallel doing a drug discovery and development that uh, hopefully is going to work uh, almost irrespective of. Uh, Whether you find out that answer. Uh, yes. Because mm -hmm. if they started to show the symptoms, yeah. you'd be able to give it that. Right. Is this rewarding work for you? It is very rewarding work, yes. And does somebody ever thank you? <laughs> uh, sometimes, actually, yes. That's good. And you never had Lyme disease. No, I have not. Do you do you do you wear deet? Do you wear? Do you cover up? Do you stay out of the woods? Uh, you know, to, to tell you the truth, I'm in a slightly different category because if I'm bitten by a tick, I know exactly what antibiotic I'm going to take. It's not going to be doxycycline. And h how is that? You just know. I'll just. No, you go, you'll go I, for the most aggressive form. I absolutely, that's yeah. what I'm going to do. That's yes. what you would do with your uh, own. That's health. what I would do. Yes. And are, are people resist that because it's not covered by insurance or it has side effects? Or? Well, it's, it's a number of things. Yeah. Well, first of all, lack, lack of information on, on that. Right, right. The, uh, the sort of uh, the feeling that uh, perhaps among physicians that maybe 90% cure is not so bad. Right, right. Right. Uh, and uh, the patients do not know that, right, right. that, that, that there can be a very bad outcome.